Jojo Siwa has just come out to defend Colleen Ballinger. And understandably, that has a lot of people both very angry and very confused. Jojo has a long history of collaborating with Colleen, so naturally, when a lot of the things that came out about Colleen recently started coming out, people were wondering what Jojo had to say about all of this. Did she feel like she was mistreated by Colleen? Did she feel like she was preyed upon or used? or just spoken to inappropriately? Well, the answer seems to be no. So today with you, I wanna look at what Jojo actually said, as well as Jojo's relationship with Colleen, and very importantly, her relationship with other creators in the space. If you've been keeping up with the Colleen Ballinger story, it's quite likely that already you've seen some of the more inappropriate things that were said and done towards Jojo Siwa in Colleen's videos. But when I was doing research for this video, I found a couple of things that I haven't really seen anybody else talking about. And to be perfectly honest with some of it, my jaw was on the floor. Everything was just so much more shocking than I possibly could have imagined. And the fact that all of it was put on display for us all to watch and we didn't realize. It's just very sad. So let's actually talk about it. Firstly, Colleen Ballinger, as you may or may not know, has recently been exposed for some pretty damning behavior. Firstly, it's recently been alleged that Colleen Ballinger has been involved with some inappropriate behavior towards her child fans. This included things like sending them inappropriate messages, being on group chats with them, sending them inappropriate gifts, such as the incident with Adam McIntyre, and also some things as well, not not exactly revolving around her child fans, but allegations of racism and also of sending inappropriate photos of Trisha Paytas without Trisha's knowledge or permission, which is something that now is allegedly confirmed because according to Trisha Paytas, Colleen Ballinger had messaged her to apologize for doing this. If you haven't been keeping up with what's going on or if you just need a refresher, I will link videos down in the description for you to check out and catch up. But that leads us on to today with Jojo Siwa and her whole take on this. Jojo Siwa has known Colleen Ballinger since she was about 12 or 13 years old. I've that, known man. I've known Colleen for since I was since I was 12. And since then, Colleen and Jojo have been friends. And I don't mean they knew each other and maybe made some videos together. They were friends. They would hang out together in private and message each other. In fact, Jojo would hang out with a lot of Colleen's family. And of course, they would also make videos together too. There was quite a lot of videos that they have made during this time. Although a lot of the things from those videos have now been dug up again, and looking at it with a fresh perspective, you can see that a lot of the things being said and done in these videos were kind of inappropriate given the age difference between these people. Jojo would have been ages 13 onwards and Colleen was a grown woman. And she was saying things to this young child like this. You are not supposed to dress porn when you are dancing and I can see your entire legs stopping. You're like five years old. And like this. The first position, second position, third position, Whoa! Did you hurt your tukey? What's a tukey? What's... Hurt your tukey? What's a tukey? <laughs> I'm talking about your vagina. So inappropriate! Why? Why did I say something about your vagina? Stop before she hurts her tukey permanently. It's important to remember that these are the kind of things that Shane Dawson got in trouble for. For us all realizing actually that was a really kind of gross thing. And unfortunately, I believe that one of the reasons that this is getting overlooked when it comes to Colleen Ballinger is the fact that Colleen Ballinger is a woman. I don't think it's in any way controversial to say that. It's more inherently and visually inappropriate when it's an adult man with a young girl but it is the same age difference between the two. It's the same inappropriateness. And while people were digging these things up and seeing all of the inappropriate stuff that Jojo was exposed to by Colleen, it made people question, again, when all of the information came out about Colleen and people finally started speaking out, people beyond Adam McIntyre, it made people question, well, is Jojo going to say anything about this? Because as it stands right now, Jojo Siwa is 20 years old. 
Then it was announced that Jojo Siwa was going to be on Howie Mandel's podcast and that in it she would be discussing Colleen Ballinger. Now I had my notifications turned on for this and I'm sure a lot of people did but nobody actually expected that it was going to go the way that it did. Before we continue with the rest of the video though, I want to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that lets you try new fragrances every single month. They have a load of choices for men's, women's and unisex fragrances. And they also have a lot of different designer brands as well as indie brands too. You can pick exactly which fragrances you want to receive every month so there is no surprises and it is only $17, which I think is amazing for how much you get for it. Because with each fragrance you get a month's supply apply. And you can see they do give a decent sized bottle. So you really get the chance to try it out quite a bit and see whether you like it or not. For me personally, this is the ideal subscription service because I love perfume, but I hate buying perfume. I have commitment issues with it, okay? There have been so many times in the past where I have gone to the shop, I've bought a perfume that I thought that I liked, and then I wear it for a bit and realize that I hate it. So then I'm stuck with this big bottle of perfume that I don't even like, and fragrances can be pretty pricey, which makes it very upsetting when that happens. So it's great that with a service like this, you get to actually try out the scents before you purchase a big bottle. This month I got Pear Ink from Juliet Has a Gun, which is absolutely gorgeous. It has scents that I love like pear and musk. Although I was surprised because I thought this one would be my favorite, and it wasn't. My favorite ended up being Golden Gardenia from Joe Loves. It's just the most beautiful, well-balanced fragrance. It's got those floral notes of gardenia, but then it's also really grounded with the spice notes and the smoked wood note. You can really smell that, it's beautiful. The last one I got is Peach Fields from Skylar, which was another surprise because I thought I was gonna hate this. I wouldn't normally go for a fruity perfume, but this ended up being really well-balanced, so I actually like it a lot. If you like to try Scentbird and I really recommend that you do. I think it's a great subscription service and I'm very pleased with what I got. Then you can use my code Vangelina to get 55% off, which means you can try out your first month for just a little over $7. Thanks so much to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on with the rest of it. Throughout this entire section of this podcast, all Jojo seems to do is praise Colleen, praise her creativity and the character and the work ethic and her family. I know Colleen very, very, very well. And I think the work that Colleen has done for, for the internet is incredible. I think her creativity is incredible. As well as just straight up making excuses that are kind of incoherent. Saying it's hard to be a comedian because you can't say things you could say years ago. It's very hard to be a character where people are also looking at you as you're a real human behind that character. And I think being a comedian is very hard because you were able to do things years ago that were okay. And now that we've grown and we've matured, we've realized that they're not okay. You know what I mean? That it's hard to not blur the lines between friend and fan. And that the problem is that the internet wanted to capitalize off her cancellation. The problem is the internet was able to capitalize off of her her cancellation. Not that the problem was anything to do with Colleen's own actions, which let's remind ourselves that although everything currently is alleged, a lot of these things she has in some way admitted to. She's admitted to being inappropriate with her fans and messaging them inappropriately while at the same time saying everything is a lie. She admitted that in her little ukulele response video. But that's not the problem. The problem is the internet capitalizing off of it. But here's the real kicker of this whole thing. And I have never said the phrase the real kicker in my entire life, so you know that this is serious. Essentially, she just calls all of the people who have come out about Colleen and their experiences with her, all of the victims of Colleen and her family and the people she associates with, like Adam McIntyre, Becky, Oliver, all of those people, calls them liars. The problem is the internet was able to capitalize off of her her cancellation and they still are and they still are continuing to and it's it's not okay because a lot of it is based off of lies she even comes out and says that 
real grooming is a sensitive issue, essentially saying that this is nothing of the sort. Now she did say at the start of this podcast that she was still friends with Colleen, so clearly she wants to defend her friend. Well, that's one theory. But to sit there and just call all of these people liars for things that we can clearly see with our own eyes. We can see the messages, we can see the videos, we can see the clips of Colleen on stage spreading people into yoga poses. We can see her getting young boys to reach down her pants to get snacks. We can see her talking about very inappropriate things with young people in her group chats, which again, she hasn't admitted straight out, I said this thing to these people, but she said, I've spoken inappropriately to my young fans and overshared. And we can see all this. And Jojo Siwa has every right to claim that that was not her experience with Colleen. But I don't know what she thinks gives her the right to discredit everybody and call them all liars. Because it's not like she said she has some evidence for this, that she has something that disproves all of this. And to be perfectly honest with you, I think that if in this point in time there was some concrete evidence that somehow disproved everything that we can see with our own two eyes, things that we can hear with our own ears, if that existed, Colleen and her very well-known, well-established legal team would have put that out. But as we've discussed before, the only things that they have responded to are the false allegations of blackface, which was actually green paint, and the fact that she was saying that she wasn't copyright claiming people who had used her ukulele song in videos. Those are the only things they have come out to disprove, discredit, to say, no, that didn't happen. Everything else, the real stuff that people actually care about, she hasn't come out with any contrary evidence. And neither has Jojo Siwa. So why does she get to sit there and call other people liars? And I need to remind everybody very carefully because I know there are a lot of people who still see Jojo Siwa as a child and they're going to think that I need to give her some extra credit in the situation. Jojo Siwa is not a child, she is 20 years old. She is the same age, I believe, as Adam McIntyre. So I am going to treat them at the same level. And speaking of Adam McIntyre, he did also respond to this. He does suggest in his response that Jojo's defensiveness might be because she may have some secrets that she doesn't want to come out. Now, I have absolutely nothing to back that up. That is just Adam's theory. Could be completely wrong, I don't know, but it is worth mentioning all of people's ideas about this. And the reason for this is the fact that Jojo Siwa was in group chats as well with Colleen, which people are saying is strange because she would have been there to witness all of the things that have been leaked and have been put out into the world. But here she is defending everything. Now I will say, to Jojo's defense, if she was in these group chats, she was working. She has been working from the time she was, what, two? She's busy. She has a busy schedule. I'm sure she wasn't sitting in there all day, every day, so she may not have seen everything. She may have seen very minuscule amounts of chats and may have never seen any of the bad stuff, so fair enough if that is the case, and it also may not be the case, but she was very busy. One other very interesting thing, though, that Adam brings up in his response video is that there was allegedly a period of time in which Colleen Ballinger and Jojo Siwa were no longer friends. A whole year. This came after Colleen Ballinger's divorce. And again, remember, everything I'm saying is alleged. After they got divorced, Jojo Siwa did a collab video with Josh, Colleen's ex-husband. And according to Adam, after this, Colleen was literally furious with Jojo and essentially cut her out after that. She would have been what age there? 13, 14? Colleen Ballinger was angry at like a 13, 14 year old. Colleen Ballinger, the grown woman who was grown enough to be going through a divorce. We don't have exact confirmation of this feud from either party, 
But there is an episode from Rachel Ballinger's podcast, Rachel being Colleen's sister, where she sits down and talks to Jojo Siwa. This was more recent, this would have been in 2021. In this podcast, Jojo is explaining how she came to know Rachel and Colleen, how they all became friends, again saying it was when she was 12 that she first met them and they became friends pretty quickly. But she references that our friendship paused for a year and then yeah we we kind of knew each other of each other colleen did videos with you yeah we our friendship was paused for like a year it took like a year and then todrick got colleen and i back together through a performance at vidcon correct and literally that same month i get a message on twitter <laughs> now mind you this whole year pause <laughs> i had loved their family and i had literally adored them, adored Colleen, adored Rachel, adored Jessica, Chris, and the kids, your fa parents, like everything. Mm -hmm. But I just, you know, there was, a, there was a wall. And so it doesn't matter. So it is possible, although again, alleged, that this year pause that she's talking about is the same thing that Adam McIntyre was talking about. That because of the collab video that Jojo, as a child, did with Colleen's ex-husband, Colleen Ballinger was angry at said child and decided to cut her out. This grown woman was having a fight with the child. There's a situation with Jojo, Siwa, mm -hmm. that I walked away from because it was starting to get that way and I was being pressured to continue pulling her over to my side. And I flat out said, I will not, this is after the divorce. So mm -hmm, like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm starting to like, snap out of it, right? Mm -hmm. And to the people that were like, you need to reach out to Jojo because she was very much, you know, a fan of you and favored you, mm -hmm. but the Ballingers are trying to get to her and bring her yeah, over. Yeah, we noticed that there was a shift with her. And the moment she even went on a podcast with Rachel, I believe, she even said, oh yeah, for that year, I didn't talk to you guys because I was, y'all were mad at me because I was, you know, hanging out with Josh or whatever. I'm, again, I'm paraphrasing. I got tweeted that information. And I don't think I could possibly sum up the <laughs> Colleen Ballinger situation any better than that. This is a woman, a grown woman, who was capable of having a feud with the child. It's absolutely ridiculous. Now this was only a year they did get over it and make up. They ended up doing a video together which was apparently really awkward and then they were in Canada at the same time so Colleen FaceTimed Jojo and said hey I know there's this weird elephant in the room between us. Can we just forget about it? It was actually really awkward between Colleen and I. There was like, a huge elephant in the room for a minute. Yeah. So then we, we were both in Canada at the same time. I was like oh my god we should hang out like whatever but like knew we actually weren't gonna hang out. And then she FaceTimed me. And at the time I was like, oh my God, Colleen's FaceTiming me. Like, I was so excited, but I was also like, I just want to be friends with her, but like, I know that there's something weird. And she FaceTimed me and she was like, all right. And I was like, please tell you, you're about to say what I think you're gonna say. And she was like, listen, <laughs> we both know there's an elephant in the room and we both hate it. So can we just forget about it? Again, if this is the situation that we think it's about, she's just saying, can we just forget about it? Instead of apologizing to the child for cutting her out because of her own divorce issues. And why exactly would she be so angry about this as well? Did Jojo know intimate details about her divorce and her relationship, which should have made Jojo hate Josh? In which case, why did this child know details about your, oh wait, Apparently everybody in the group chats was told details about her divorce, despite the fact that they were children. Why are you telling children about your divorce? I still can't get over that. Why are you telling children intimate details of your relationship? Why are you doing that? Now, after this whole year where not only was Colleen not speaking to Jojo Siwa, the child, but Colleen's entire family had cut out Jojo. And in this podcast as well, Rachel says, that she eventually decided to DM a then 14 year old, I believe, Jojo Siwa, to say, let's be friends. But then I get a message from Rachel <laughs> that says- On Twitter, it's a DM. It's a DM on Twitter. I I'll, slid into her DMs. I get a text on Twitter, a DM that says, hey, let's be friends. <laughs> I shot my shot. 
Remember, according to these versions of events, they hadn't been speaking for like a year. What? What was happening in Rachel Ballinger's head, a grown woman, that she was thinking, oh yeah, Jojo Siwa, that child that I used to hang out with all the time, I miss her. I want this child to be my friend. Why is that running through your head? And on top of that, what could you possibly have in common with a literal child? I can barely talk to people my age. Never mind actual children. I just find this one detail so bizarre that she just went out of her way after a year of not speaking about this person. Firstly, it popped into her head like, oh yes, remember the kid? I want to be friends with the kid. I'm going to go text the kid, hey kid, let's be friends. Why, why, why are you doing that? Why are you, why? Exp Rachel Ballinger, if you would like to explain this to me, I'd love to talk to you because what, and actually I have a lot more questions for you as well. Because there seems to be a lot of strange things between not only the relationship with Colleen Ballinger and Jojo Siwa, but also with Rachel Ballinger and Jojo Siwa. Jojo and Rachel have done quite a few collabs together, but one notable collab is a podcast episode in 2019 where Rachel tells Jojo, we can cuddle when you're 18. Currently, people are trying to sue her because there's these two dudes that said that they helped her write, I just oh, yeah. took a DNA test, I'm 100% that B word. Thank you, because there's mine in here. Yeah, but also, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, that okay. No, I just don't swear on my podcasts. Oh, we got to stay monetized. Yeah. Love her. So it's nothing to do with you, you little minor. Um. <laughs> Thank you. You're Thank you. I got so upset at Rachel the, at the other day because she pulled the minor card. Because what did I said? I wouldn't. I don't remember what I even said. I, <laughs> I don't know. Like, but it was like, because you're a kid. And I was like. Rachel? <laughs> I was like, when you're 18, we'll cuddle or yeah. something. <laughs> okay. No, Wait, well, well, hold on. Uh, you're going to gloss over this? That you told Jojo Siwa, <laughs> when you're 18, we'll cuddle? Is this the new scandal? Now, I am sure, at least I hope I'm sure, that this was just a joke. Because to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think there is any sinister intentions going on here. But I do think a lot of the conversations between them and a lot of the things that they have admitted and the relationship in and of itself is inappropriate. Because if we go back to the 2021 podcast episode where she's talking about the break in their relationship, they're also talking about just their relationship in general. And yeah, they talk quite a bit about the times that they've hung out in private, not for work, not for collabing, not for anything like that, just to hang out, to drink root beer, to hop over Colleen's fence to get root beer, which seemed to be an ongoing occurrence. She was hanging out with them so much that there was something that could be an ongoing occurrence. Apparently as well, when Jojo had a boyfriend, Rachel says she was there for the texts about Jojo and her ex-boyfriends. Remember when you I were know. straight in that boyfriend? Ew, I had the singular. Shit. Singular. You had Singular. You had two. I had singular. You had douchebag and another dude. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I am never going to I talk. I wasn't there for the text message. <laughs> they had talked about her first kiss. And Rachel, Colleen, and Jojo had a group chat called Sister Has a Mister, where they would talk about boys. <laughs> Sister has a Mr. Group chat. Those were the days. Oh, sister has a Mr. Group chat. Oh, sister has a Mr. Group chat was literally just Ugh. me, Colleen, and Rachel. Just talking about the, guys. Like the minute happening of my first kiss. Like it was. Yeah. It was like. Yeah. And like they would stay awake all night long. Because we knew you were up with a dude and we're like, oh my God. And then. Yeah. And then like I'd go out to dinner and I'd check text from them at the end and they'd be like all right she's at buco de pepo should we go crash like i'd be like oh my god what two grown women in a group chat with a child talking about boys what does that entail why is this a group chat you have because the thing is as well it's not like they're saying at any point oh yeah we were kind of hanging out with you to like look out for you in the youtube space or you know to mentor you about youtube or like just to you know be there for you or something like they, throughout this whole thing they're saying that they were friends they were friends they were 
this is not a, a mentorship or something like there it's a friendship it's a relationship throughout this whole time why are you friends with the child and again i'm gonna say it right because it, it's to put it into perspective and i'm not judging the people who don't immediately recoil in the same way as they would for a man because i understand but imagine that this was two men right two men in a group chat with a young girl talking about her relationships or two men talking to a young boy being friends with this young child it's really weird and i will say again i i don't think there was anything sinister like that going on there's been no indication of anything like that and it would just be harmful to speculate just based on nothing but even without that it's still just inappropriate and the cuddle comment is weird and in another podcast episode with rachel this time from 2022 you can see how close they are in one little bit of information which is that jojo is in rachel's top people on her messages and very sadly as well they do talk about jojo's age in this jojo talks about feeling like a 27 year old in an eight year old's body or that that was what people had said about her and rachel says and brace yourself for this one right are you braced are you bracing i don't actually now that i'm thinking about it i don't actually know what that phrase is telling you to do but just oh like crap brace right brace yourself for this one <laughs> because when she said this i was just like in absolute like i'm laughing because it was an absolute shock at how close these people are to getting it rachel says to jojo our relationship would be much less weird if you were 30 i can't i can't i can't i can't although i've been told my whole life that i'm 27 in an 18 year old's body our relationship would be a lot less weird if you were 30. yeah i <laughs> think we looked at a little bit more normal she's fully aware that their relationship is weird she points out it would be better if she was a grown adult like they are grown adults what aren't you getting here the very upsetting part of this as well is that it's not just the Ballinger family that has this weird dynamic with Jojo Siwa. It is a lot of people. For example, she has done videos with Shane Dawson as well. They did a ton of collabs together. Now, I can't tell and I don't think that they hung out too much in private, but it's worth mentioning. We also have Joey Graceffa. Now, I have quite a bit to say about the relationship between Joey Graceffa and Jojo Siwa. So remember I said a second ago that there was a part in the podcast with Rachel where Jojo's talking about people saying she's much older than she actually is. Joey Graceffa recently did a video with Jojo Siwa where she's blind dating people. There's like a curtain, she can't see them, but they're asking questions. And you know what? I'm just gonna let it play for you. If you could change one thing about your life, what would it be? Well, that's a good question. Like uh, literally anything. When I was young, I wish I would have let myself believe that I was young. Cause I look back at being 16, 14 and at the time, and like you knew me at this point in my you life You were too. a full grown adult. I was a full grown adult yeah. and I believed I was too. Yeah. I was like, I'm 14, I'm old. What are you I talking about? I was literally about? so impressed slash Thank shocked you. whenever like I'd be around. I was like, this girl's a business woman and Thank she you. is a, a teenager or a kid. And now it's weird for me to see 14 year olds and be six yeah. years older than them and be like, Whoa. Joey says that she was a fully grown adult. Now, I understand that he's saying just she acted like it, but I think the wording is important here because she was not an adult. In no way was she an adult. She was a child. And he points this whole thing out as just being impressive. It's impressive how mature she was for her age. It's like... To a degree, yeah, it's impressive. Like, she has an amazing work ethic. Nobody can take that away from her. But at the same time, it's extremely sad that she was pushed into an environment where she was forced to be mature for her age. She was forced to be this little businesswoman. She lost her childhood. She lost it to Dance Moms and then later to YouTube and whatever the show was that came before that. She lost it to Abby Lee Miller, who, by the way, did you know that Abby Lee Miller is not Jojo Siwa's mother? Because until last year, I thought she was. She's not. Please tell me I'm not the only one who thought that. But in my opinion, there is a much more important encounter between Jojo Siwa and Joey Graceffa, which is his 2019 Christmas party. Now, Joey Graceffa throws these Christmas parties like every year, I believe, at least 
not in uh, lockdown times. He films them, he vlogs them, he invites a load of YouTubers over. It's just a lot of fun. Now, in his 2019 one, Jojo Siwa was there, along with Colleen Ballinger and Rachel Ballinger. What's notable is that, to my knowledge, and from what I could see of this, Jojo Siwa was the only person there who was under the age of 18. Everybody else was an adult. It was an adult's Christmas party. I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong because I don't know everybody there, but I believe at the time, James Charles would have been the youngest person there. He would have been, I think, 20. Firstly, it's weird enough that she is the only child at this party. Now, you could argue it's a work event, but I would argue back if my child, for some, I don't know in what scenario this would happen, but if my child had to go to a work event full of adults, Oh, I did not like that. Ugh. Okay, that freaked me out. Moving on. I feel like Colleen Ballinger is in the room with me or something. That was hideous. So in this strange scenario where for some reason my child has to be at a work event with a ton of adults and only adults at a Christmas party, I am going to be there in the room. I am not leaving you alone with a bunch of adults. Presumably, Colleen and Rachel were the adults in charge of her. Presumably. I have no confirmation of that, but I believe that that was more than likely the case. And that's all well and good. I guess her parents trusted them. But from what we've seen, it doesn't appear like they were acting like parental figures of some kind. After all, they were friends. And Rachel and Jojo can cuddle when she turns 18. She's at this party and you can see that people are drinking. In fairness, it's a white claw, I don't even know if that counts, but still, the alcohol is there. And I know, inevitably, somebody is gonna put in the comments, Oh, have you never been to, like, a Christmas party with your family? Like, people are having alcohol and there's kids there and it's no big deal. The difference with that, <laughs> you silly, silly people, is that that is your family. That's a family gathering. There is a big difference between a family gathering at Christmas where kids in there and parents and aunts and uncles and whoever are having, you know, a little bit of sherry, a little bit of wine and an adult Christmas party with a bunch of YouTubers who aren't related to each other where Jojo Siwa is seemingly the only child present. And speaking of present, there was a whole gift giving thing there. Joey Graceffa does this thing called the White Elephant Gifts, which is where everybody or whoever wants to join in will bring a gift and it'll all get put under the tree and then people will just take them at random and they can steal them off each other. There's like a limit on how many times you can steal them. Jojo ended up with some donuts in the end, which is grand, great, donuts. And a lot of the gifts were like normal things, kitchenware, clothes, skincare products, Stop! I hate that! Stop doing that! It's so highly unnecessary. Most of the gifts were normal, but among them was some alcohol, which, you know, it's not the biggest deal, she would just give it to somebody else. But there was also adult toys as a gift. Daniel's mom just got all the toys. Which, what was the plan if Jojo ended up with one of those? What was the plan there? Had they considered that? And I'm not stupid, I know that teenagers know what this stuff is, but again, there's a big difference between teenagers discussing this stuff among themselves and a teenager being at a party with a bunch of adults where she gets this as a gift. Thankfully, it do that doesn't seem to have happened. All in all, though, it was a very inappropriate situation for this child to be brought into, and I think it just showcases some of the relationship that Jojo Siwa had with adults in her life. And I don't know if you saw this, I don't know if you remember this, but pretty recently, Todrick Hall's assistant recently came out to talk about the collabs between Jojo Siwa and Todrick Hall. And apparently her mother would just drive her there, drop her off, not get out of the car herself, just drop her off and leave. Who is teaching you these things? Where is your mother? Stop it! I don't trust your juice. Okay. I don't trust any of your juices, Josh. If I don't trust your juices, I don't want room. your juices on me. That was the rule. Come on, Jojo, who's teaching you? Do it on the kitty cat thing. Who taught you that you can pour your juices on other people, Jojo? You know? That's not appropriate. I brought the lecture. Yes, you do. You're playing with handcuffs. You're twerking on other people. It's I, I did not twerk on other people. I twerk 
on myself. Do not trust this girl. I've received so many comments asking where JoJo's mom is during the filming of this video. It's horrifying that Colleen jokes about the lack of adult supervision while making inappropriate and suggestive comments when JoJo was only 13 years old and Colleen was 29 years old at the time of this video. I am Tommy Italiano, Todger Call's former assistant, and I have firsthand knowledge of filming with JoJo Siwa. It's very likely that JoJo was without adult supervision at the time of this video. Todger collaborated with JoJo around the exact same time, and both videos were published on October 2016. Disney? Yeah, Tommy's behind the camera. Tommy, what do you think they are? I thought it was perplexing and odd that JoJo's mom, Jess, dropped JoJo off at Todger's house without even getting out of the car or asking any questions. It was my first time meeting both Jess and Jojo, so it was very strange that Jess would just entrust her daughter with a complete stranger. However, Todrick had worked with her previously and was on Dance Moms, so there was a level of trust there. Regardless, she was left alone with Todrick and I to film in his bedroom, which, if we weren't gay, would be very strange. Even in the video, Jojo references Colleen, so it shows how much of an influence Colleen had over Jojo at that time. The Say Anything Challenge. Now, I really watch this on Colleen and Rachel's channel as Colleen Ballinger all literally the time. And I would like to note that I was not present during the filming of Colleen's videos, and I recently found them only during my research into Colleen. I'm mortified, disgusted, and condemn Colleen's actions. She owes her victims an apology. Nobody was looking out for this girl. From a very young age, her idea of what a relationship between a child being herself and an adult should look like was just completely warped. She was put into these situations that she shouldn't have been put into and God willing, nothing happened to her. I don't think anything happened to her. She hasn't said anything happened to her and hopefully that is the case. But whether something sinister did happen or not, it's inappropriate. Her idea of the relationship between them was warped and her childhood was stolen from her. She didn't get to have a proper childhood because she was thrown into this space with adults and treated as an equal among them when she wasn't. And more than likely a lot of these adults just used her for clout because she was really famous and I mean that's again what Adam said about this that Colleen was just befriending her for clout and to get her child audience over to her. Okay so you're asking why am I talking about this? What does this have to do with her talking about her relationship with Colleen Ballinger. Well, the thing is, I can kind of understand why she wouldn't see an issue, why she wouldn't think that Colleen has done anything wrong, because her whole life, from the time she was on that other dancing show, then Dance Moms, and then doing YouTube, and throughout the whole time just put in these weird situations for a developing child to be in, and to be put in weird dynamics with adults that shouldn't have occurred, her sense of what is appropriate and what is not has been completely warped and I'm sorry she can't tell me otherwise. At what point in her life would she have learnt what is an appropriate relationship between an adult and a child because that's not something you can just say once and then move on and then never show it again. She was consistently put in strange dynamics with adults. So sure, then when she had a weird relationship with Colleen Ballinger and she definitely had a weird relationship with Rachel Ballinger, she doesn't see a problem. Her whole life has taught her that this is okay. So then when she sees it, she thinks that's not a problem. Now that in itself is not to not hold her to what she said. That is not to excuse her calling these victims liars because she is now currently an adult and it's on her what she says and what she does and the people that she chooses to defend. But it does give us an insight into why she might feel this way. Why she might feel like, Colleen's done nothing wrong, she's great and I idolize her and she's my best friend. Because she's never been shown that it's wrong. She never learned through her developing years that that's wrong. But at the same time, she still did say, like I said at the beginning, she just called these people liars. She didn't provide any evidence to the contrary. She just sat there and decided that her experience was everybody else's experience and that is not okay. Like I have always said throughout the history of this channel, the things that I'm saying are not to excuse the behavior. 
It's just a potential explanation. And it's possible that throughout all of these years, all of the relationships that she's had with these adults, all of the situations that she's been put into, that has all prepared her for her stance today, which is where she's just defending Colleen's actions blindly. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you did enjoy it. Please let me know in the comments what you think about everything. Had you heard of all of this before? Had you not? And I want to say for the people who are going to be like, oh, like you're just overly sensitive. Like you're like chronically online and like you just think everything's a problem because somebody is going to comment that. I explained this situation to my chronically offline girlfriend. Now I didn't say who I was talking about because she does have some idea who some of these people are. I just explained like the ages, the situations, and I said, so if this child is put in this situation, is that weird? Immediate, yes. Everything I explained to her, she said, yeah, that's really weird, without even knowing who I was talking about. She thought it was inappropriate and she thought it was gross. And that's somebody who is not overly sensitive and is not chronically online. So there you go. Anyway, like, comment, share, check out the merch in proper YouTuber fashion. I'm going to say that as well. Uh, please, very importantly, don't forget to subscribe. I'm getting quite close to 100,000 and that would be kind of cool and I'd very much appreciate it and I'll, I'll definitely do something if the channel ever does hit that. So yeah, subscribe, turn on notifications, really appreciate that. And of course, please don't forget to check out Scentbird. You can click the link in my description and use my code Vangelina to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. Thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video and thank you for watching today's video. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Do you know what? I was about to start this video with what's crack? It's Vangelina Scoff just out of pure habit uh, but I don't do that anymore. How do I? So like, what's crack?